Michelle a lot. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, of course, welcome. man. Yeah, welcome to the studio. Good to that see was you. Really good. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, that's a that was a solid. Woo! Ooh. <laughs> we could do this all day. Hell yeah! So let's uh, let's get this going. Um, just first off, tell me about yourself. Like, how did you get started? What got you into music? You could go back as early as like when you were a kid, or what was what's like your first memory about it? Okay, so um, when I was growing up, I I'm, I'm from Los Angeles, by the mm. way. Uh, I grew up in El Monte, and like uh, what should I call it? my parents had a big influence like they would play music all the time it was like mm -hmm. always like either traditional chinese opera music mm -hmm. or they would play like george michael or like yeah. winnie houston or so like stevie wonder yeah it was like a very interesting range you know uh -huh. like like you had like celine dion like basically pop artists of the 80s mm -hmm. and i for the longest time i actually hated 80s music yeah because I was just like, oh, I hear this growing up all the time. I was like, uh -huh. oh, this ain't normal. This is like, this is like the normal to me. And I was like, hey, I don't want to hear the, the normal shit until mm -hmm. I grew up. Like, as I grew up, I had more higher appreciation. For sure. But uh, back to my childhood, I started playing uh, piano when I was like mm -hmm. five years old. You know, like a lot of like Asian households, they want you to, you know, the, the kids be like, oh, like we're going to get our kids to play piano <laughs> for, sure. for bragging rights. Yeah. To go to their, <laughs> to go to their friends and be like, hey, man, like my kid can do this. My kid can do this. My <laughs> yeah, kid can yeah. do this. So I played piano to like maybe in two hours. Like I was even doing like, like middle school jazz band, like doing orchestra music into like piano until like i was like maybe 14 mm. first year of fresh uh, freshman in high school mm -hmm. and i remember i started like f going from 80s music like listening to discovering music like lincoln park as i was growing up to like akon yeah to like t-pain and like looking uh, at other genres and i remember limewire was a big deal back in the day sure. and i was over here just like you know downloading uh music uh I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but like, <laughs> it's but cool. like, let's like, be realistic. Everyone was doing it, you know, yeah. like everyone was doing it. I was discovering new music mm -hmm. and Linkin Park was definitely a big influence in my life. Mm -hmm. Like Mike Shinoda, Chester, like those guys, like big influence in my life. Uh, Gym Class Heroes was a big influence in my life. For sure. Like basically like the, like, uh, I think the genre is like hip hop rock mm -hmm. or like rock rock hip hop or rap rock you know like that was like a big influence into like just like maybe like a couple years like middle school to going to high school i started listening to metal and uh -huh. rock i will actually first it was classic rock yeah, like yeah. led zeppelin i was listening to uh gateway drug cream uh -huh. rush you know like black sabbath and then it became more like that was like 70s rock kind of like mm -hmm. i think one of the names wasn't really a 70s name but like i was starting to listen to 70s rock and then it progressed to rush i, I started listening to rush mm -hmm. canadian rock band a phenomenal like yeah. three-piece band of course and then that became into metal mm -hmm. and then i started listening to iron maiden megadeth uh metallica so your influences are really all over the place. Yeah, and it, it was is very interesting because then I was listening a lot of metal until like I hit age eighteen, and uh, then one of the homies was like, "Hey, man, like, oh, and also, yeah, and when I was age fourteen, I was like learning how to play guitar for sure. I was actually learning like Slipknot lines. Yeah, I was trying to play. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to play Slipknot, you know, like, and that was very interesting because I I fucking failed. Like, <laughs> that was terrible. I don't know why yeah. I thought like, oh, I'm just gonna jump the gun and just go be like, oh, I'm just gonna start doing like, chun, 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 chun. like yeah. it didn't make no sense. But you tried. I tried, yeah. And then yeah. like, actually, I gave up by the age of 14. I gave up piano and I gave up guitar because I was mm. just like, oh, this is not for me. Mm. So then I remember my high school jazz band wanted to. Uh, they needed a bass player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, fuck it. You know, I'm just going to learn bass. I'm going to learn bass guitar. Mm -hmm. So then through my high school years, I started playing uh, bass guitar for um, jazz band. I played it for marching band, too. Mm -hmm. They had, like, uh, the field shows and stuff. And, like, I was in the pit. I was just playing electric bass. And then eventually uh, or uh, they had an orchestra course, and yeah. I was playing upright bass. Oh, wow. Yeah nice that was fun like i never really owned the upright i just rented it like it mm. was fun my parents you know they, they they took the time and money to really have me learn this instrument for sure and then eventually 
uh, one of the homies was like, hey, man, like, you're a really good, like, musician. Like, are you trying to, you know, pursue music as mm -hmm. a career? I was like, yeah, why not? You know, like, whatever. So he took me in. Like, I started learning, like, Logic. I started learning Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. Started, like, doing, like, a lot of production. Yeah. At the same time, going to college, trying to get a music degree, which wow. I never did. Because, yeah. like eventually like when i was doing uh music in college um i was starting to get um gigs and getting uh notice by other musicians and musical directors to the point where it's like i was actually starting to gig a lot more mm -hmm. so some of my professors in college actually got pissed at me they're like hey man like why are you skipping class? Like, why are you doing all these, like, Because <laughs> you're working. And I was like, yeah. okay, first of all, you guys are teaching me how to get a gig yeah, yeah, in yeah. college. And I get it. Like, I have to do these, like, and, and, you know, college, they try to teach you the history of everything. And, like, mm. they don't really, like, any career, in my honest opinion, in, in college, unless it's, like, purposely at art school, they're not really teaching you how to get, like, mm -hmm. for example, like, get a pop gig you know sure. like oh i want to play with uh justin timberlake you know they're not really teaching mm -hmm. you to get that type of gig they're teaching you how to keep a corporate gig or be old school you know like, which yeah. is cool like it was a lot of good knowledge mm -hmm. but, but yeah they got practical experience exactly mm -hmm. and then they got pissed at me they're like oh why 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 is he why, why is he skipping class why is he mm -hmm. what the fuck's he doing you know like i'm like and i just want to say you know, i was like dude i'm gigging like and eventually yeah. like i was just let go of the program mm -hmm. And that's cool, you know, like... I feel by, like it ends up working for the best for you, though. Yeah, and then, by like, by then, I was, like, 19, mm. and then I already got my first tour, you know, like, a yeah. major tour. So it was just, like, okay, I was going to, going to play with this artist, and that was cool. And then, like, at the same time, I was trying to, like, scramble and figure out, like, mm. all right, am I going to do production for the rest of my life, or am I going to do musician? Mm. And there's a couple groups out here, like, 1500 Nothing, that are doing mm. both, you know, they're, like you know touring and be in the studio with these bigger cats mm -hmm. so i was like trying to juggle both you know it was working out actually pretty well but like you know like and then now i'm like now i i i like work out a couple studios like i have my own band now i have my own collective and mm -hmm. like uh what should i call it <sighs> why am i blanking out oh what am the i studio? blanking out no it's not the studio Either way, yo, so don't worry about it. Um, yeah, that cool. all kind of leads me into wanting to talk about, you know, you have such an eclectic background from, like, coming up, being a kid, learning the piano, being, playing bass for some heavy hitters, and now that's all kind of fed your production style, which you described as primarily R&B. You want to talk a little bit more about your production? Yeah, my my production is actually heavily influenced by, like, 90s R&B. Mm -hmm. Like, Aaliyah was a big influence lauren hill mm -hmm. d'angelo like those are like real r&b in my honest opinion sure. like to the core like to like real instrumental r&b mm -hmm. but like having the introduction of electronics mm -hmm. like well 80s was actually the introduction of electronic drums electronic instruments yeah there was a real explosion there it's yeah it was a real explosion but like people really underestimate that mm -hmm. because they're like oh like you come from the 70s you got michael jackson playing with a real band mm -hmm. and all of a sudden in the 80s music was like oh like you just put on the drum machine mm -hmm. and the band can play to it and like whoa that's weird you know that's yeah, different yeah, yeah. and then bass players were not even playing bass no more they're playing either well actually yeah they were still playing bass in the 80s but like mm -hmm. they were like playing it live but most of those records that are being cut were like synth bass yeah. key bass and nobody was thinking about that but mm -hmm. like fast forward to 2000s you know 2010 like we're, we're now in 2020 mm -hmm. now you have a fusion of all instruments yeah and you normally i like to make things like make like my, my type of production is sexy you know like mm -hmm. just trying to make baby making music baby making music yeah but like yeah. not like too old school like you don't want to sure. feel like an uncle you know you don't want to feel like you don't want to feel like your your uncle's trying to make love to his aunt or some, some weirdo. so yeah it wants to be sexy but still relevant yeah it's, it's, it's like millennial sexy all right yeah that's a brand like, right there yeah that's millennial awesome. sexy it's just like trying to get that mm. and that's his own little like they call i think the genre they call it like nowadays it's like alternative r&b or mm. bedroom jams even mm -hmm. but like that's really what I like to make, but I'm still capable of making hip hop, 
pop, you For know, sure. like, but like, I don't. You have so like, many influences from so many different genres. Yeah, and then like me growing up, like I, I could understand like, oh, this is what what the, what you should do here, do here. But like at totally. the end of the day, it doesn't really make me happy when I make that type of music. Totally, you, know? you got to do what makes you happy. Right, exactly. Mental health. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shout out mental health. <laughs> Shout out mental health. <laughs> Shout out mental health. <laughs> Like Zach Fox. Shout out mental yeah. illness. Shout out mental illness, man. Zach Fox is funny, man. I love that so guy. So funny. But yo, okay, so that, um, that leads me to uh, ask you about Outdonesia. So would you say that that production style that you've grown fond of and kind of developed over time has fed into what you're doing now with Outdonesia? And can, what can you tell us about that collective as well? Yes, yes, definitely. There's a huge influence of R&B. I was actually mm-hmm. going to say, like, some of our influence are very diverse and seeing, like, comparing foreign music a lot of people for some a lot of foreign people from asia like the production of cashmere cat mm-hmm. like th- even though like they had they like edm but like cashmere cat mm. kind of like that type of production is like just different and it's just like i think it may when cashmere became famous mm-hmm. i think he may have been too ahead of his time yeah because like he got popular don't get me wrong for sure but i think his music was too ahead of his time yeah and yeah. i think if 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 he came out now because that mm-hmm. era was like 2012 to 2014 when you yeah. know monster cat you know like For that sure. was the type of music where it was just like kind of like future based yeah like if his music came out now it would have been way better in my opinion so you think the market wasn't ready for it at the time no yeah. they didn't know what to do with this guy <laughs> they really didn't yeah, yeah just came out like, oh, it's, shit, like, it's like, future bass is cool he's one of a kind you know like yeah, all of a sudden yeah. now he's working with ariana grande and like uh-huh. all these pop singers and stuff so it worked out for him yeah it worked out for him eventually but like mm-hmm. um tying it back to Altonesia, like mm-hmm. i have like basically an like not an all asian collective it's like the point of Altonesia is to help asians in the music industry mm-hmm. get noticed yeah, I because, remember you telling me a little bit about your mission. Because I believe we make up, this might be wrong, I don't know, but like I'm pretty sure we make up less than 1% mm-hmm. of like what the entire industry is. Mm-hmm. So in reality, like we're kind of like the minority group now. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm always like, I'm always like, like, you know, I'm a, a big supporter of like Black Lives Matter. I'm totally. a big supporter of like, any poc that needs help you know like mm-hmm. they definitely need it because at the end of the day grammys has been around since 30s 40s maybe yeah and the representation is so and that was all crazy. white you know and then like i remember um the uh, this might be wrong i don't know but like i remember 60s or 70s there was like a uh, soul train came out mm-hmm. you know because you know like um african-american competitors are trying to compete with this over indulgence of white people in the music industry totally so they eventually i don't know what year exactly it was but like i know eventually bet came out maybe in the 80s or 90s mm-hmm. but like i'm just guessing right now yeah and then i think the latest edition's gotta be latin grammys mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure they like barely noticed in 2000s yeah so there's a i think real... i'm pretty sure that barely came out in the 2000s mm-hmm. But having to say that, like, there is no Asian representation of any mm. type of awards. Yeah, exactly. Like, major awards or even, like, I would even say Middle Eastern representation either. Mm. Like, Middle Eastern people, like, they don't have any type of, like, Bollywood. Well, I can't say Bollywood's Middle Eastern. I'm sorry. Um, but I, I'm just saying, like, there's no, like, none of that. For sure, for sure. So this year, I think it was this year or maybe last year, an Asian artist actually won, like, best artist of the year or something mm. like it was bts yeah but obviously you know like i don't i mean I'm, I'm i don't really know what's going on but like you could tell somebody was pissed off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and put billy eilish but no disrespect to her she, her mm. music is amazing incredible the yeah. thing is bts and k-pop mm-hmm. their fans are diverse yeah you see and it's everywhere global fan base really on an unprecedented level they're yeah huge. it's re- and their support is ridiculous yeah. they sell out it's ridiculous for sure i don't know how they did it but this is like they convinced every per every person of color to be like support us you know yeah. well, and I i'm think, happy for them yeah and that's so important because especially you know as an asian musician an asian artist of any kind or any you know poc artist 
it's important to have people in the forefront, I think, of pop yeah. culture and society that you can look up to, like see someone that's like you. And that's right. so inspirational. Is that kind of what you're trying to do with Altonesia as well? Yes, definitely. I want um, I want the world to actually notice uh, Altonesia. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, once once the company starts working right, uh, honestly, our only competitor is really... Uh, sorry, I had a burp. Uh, our real competitor really is just 88 Rising. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a great... They're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, and they've had a huge and influence, and that's been awesome. Yeah, and some of the members in Altonesia actually work for 88 Rising, and I'm mm. really happy about that. That's good. Yeah, it's less competition, really, and more like, you know, everyone's well, working together. Well, I, I know for sure up. it's like it could be competitive or for it can sure. be co collaborative, you know? Mm. Like, I think, like, it, eventually, like, I already know some of the members work at 88 Rising. I know eventually we're going to start working at 88 Rising. Mm. Or in the end, it might just be like we might get bigger than them and they might work with us, you know? Mm. Like, it's just like we'll see what's going on, but I, at the end of the day, like, I already... In, I'm already enjoying what I see right now for sure of that being like 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 an entity like 88 mm -hmm. Rising in Altonesia and like shout outs to like Rich Bryan I think he mm -hmm. uh, he actually was the first Asian uh, I don't know if, if he's the first Asian American I mean not Asian American I'm sorry he's the first Asian yeah. to be on billboards yeah I think he was the first one. I don't know because, like, I still remember Jin from the 2000s mm -hmm. as a Cantonese rapper, and he was big. And oh, dumb! I'm sorry, dumbfounded. <laughs> uh, dumbfounded in a far east. We'll movie. fact check you later. <laughs> but uh, but I, I don't. But like the thing is, like I, I like dumbfounded and I like mm -hmm. far east movement. I don't think they were as big as Rich Brian now. Yeah, you know, no, that's Rich Brian like, that's now. Been inspirational for me. Right? Yeah, Rich Brian now is doing like headlining music festivals in like mm -hmm. asia and all that stuff and like he's really big right now for sure but like yeah tying back to Altonesia, like it's just like i'm just trying to make asians get noticed it's just like i've always been in groups where i was the only asian dude mm -hmm. and it was like just predominantly like poc people you know like yeah for sure and i don't really see like i don't see a lot of asians in entertainment you know be, maybe mm. because you know the parents tell them as hey don't do this it. not a good idea yeah but somebody has to you know step out and like say something about it mm -hmm. yeah i think it's we're underestimated first of all and we're underappreciated mm -hmm. and eventually i think like right now i know the movement of asians getting noticed in the entertainment industry like even in film they're getting noticed now mm -hmm. but like this thing is going to slowly uh slowly come out in the probably next five to ten years for sure well i think it's really cool what you're trying to do to bridge that gap in representation yeah i i yeah it's just and plus it's, us asians really gotta stick together you know you know and well you know i think it's time to wrap this interview up but thank you so much for coming in yeah of course anything else you want to tell the people the good people of los angeles and the world the community at large um <laughs> Shit. Oh, look out for Altonesia, man. We're going to come Altonesia. out. <laughs> We're going to come out of nowhere. We're going to be like, what the fuck? What the hell is this? <laughs> we haven't talked about it, but Altonesia is an incredible name. Hey, man. I'm not going to lie. I want to blame the memes. You know, me and, <laughs> me and actually, uh, me and Gon and Conti, actually, Gon is an Indonesian guy. And then mm. we were just fucking around one day. And we found a bunch of Indonesian memes. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them was hilariously funny because I don't know why this was so funny to us, but it was like literally like a picture of a map of the world. And uh, then like only Altonesia was colored. And it was like, this Altonesia. is Indo Indonesia. Uh, and then the and then it just flipped and then the whole world was colored. And it's like, this is Altonesia. Altonesia. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's perfect too, because the, the reach is the whole world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm over and, and me and Ghana are over here just laughing at twelve year old jokes, you know. We're like just twelve year olds inside of like adult bodies. You Yo, know? thank God for the internet. But yeah, it's been great having you in here, Law. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still, still got it. We got it. Still got it. <laughs> Thanks for coming in.